Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday, midweek Wednesday. Uh, we got a few things to get to today. Want to get started right away. First, I want to put a special shout out to Kirk Carrillo. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. He was he came to the Jacktown show from Oregon. And uh, I heard somebody said that they thought somebody from Oregon was here, but I, I didn't see. And, you know, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I should have made a meetup time because it really wasn't a meetup. But this was I was just letting you know the show was going on. And uh, I really should have, we could have met at the gazebo, so I, I won't make that mistake again. But uh, it was nice of you to come all that way. I, I, and I, Kirk said he, he got a load of goodies. Um, please, Kirk, send me an email. Let me know what you picked up and what you thought of the show. I mean, it's a big trip, but I mean, what a difference from what you see out west. You know, everywhere you go, they have different uh, items for sale. A lot of times out west, you'll see a lot of logging and things like that, a lot of uh, tools like that. But you know, uh, here in the, the Northeast, it's the Mecca, the Mecca of tools, especially machinist tools, things like that. We got a lot of it here because the industry was here back in the early days. Uh, so let's get started right away with a, uh, we got a tool, like I said, tool cleanup. We got a few things to do. So let's get uh, started now. Now for the first project I want to hit today is this Campbell. And you can see here, this is a fire hydrant wrench made in the USA, pretty heavy, solid steel. You can see here it's chem. A lot. Of, I think they did make lightweight ones, but this is a heavy duty one. Nice knurling on there. Um, I, I, these tended to get a little bit because they were out stored in uh, non climate control areas. A lot of times, a lot of times they got wet, so sometimes you get some surface rust. But this has a little bit of damage over here on one of the teeth. Can you see that there? So we're going to have to address that. So let's just do a quick cleanup wire brush. I'll show you how I coat a tool like this that's uh and i'll show you how it works so let's take it now apart. just give you a little bit of an alert here this is a kind of an, a noise that might annoy a lot of people but i want you to hear it you hear that squeaking uh we're going to take care of that 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 always drives me nuts i love to have a smooth thread area so we're going to take care of that and uh let's okay, take okay here's the culprit why it was a squeak and you can see the threads a little bit rusty and uh, here's what I was talking about, about that uh, slight thread damage here. You can see that on the corner right there. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make this flat. And uh, we're going to hit that with the file just to get that so the profile is okay. Because when it goes on there, the uh, this pole will lock it in and it won't slip in. Clean the threads out. We just put it in the vise with the, this and a flat area. And then we're going to run the file down there and then just get rid of that little... Uh, where it was buggered up. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this Campbell wrench looked like before we started? And we're calling this project done. I really enjoyed cleaning this wrench up because it's uh, it's an unusual one. Something you know you don't see too well. First of all, we cleared out all the threads in here with a file. And got that profile just perfect. Uh, if there was a little bit of flange up here, I banged it down. You could see here with the hammer just banged. So it's back to uh, the original profile. Listen to the threads. Lithium grease, smooth as can be. Uh, just, you know, this is all heavy steel. The knurling came out beautiful as we knew it would. Knurling usually always does. There's no dents or anything in it. Now, how this works is uh, over the top of the hydrant or the hydrant caps, when you put this on, you would screw this in until it locks down and you would have uh, the ability to open or close it. Now, this here acts as a type of spanner wrench because what happens is sometimes the reducer caps that go onto the hydrant have little lugs on the side and that's what you would use this for you'd put it over here and and it acts as like a spanner wrench so that's what that's for uh this is a like i said a campbell i guess these run about 45 dollars, 50 dollars for these wrenches they're not terribly expensive but a beautiful wrench i'm glad i got it for five dollars at jacktown this one's in the can Next up, one of the things I miss most about Scouts is when I used to do my show and tells, because 
first of all, the kids would be blown away by some of the stuff I'd be bringing down. And secondly, I now no longer have an excuse to buy these things. I always used to use scouts as an excuse to buy all the stuff I did. This is a, an illusion maker, or it's a, kind of a hologram maker. And you can see here how this works. Uh, it'll make sense when you see it, but there's two parabolic mirrors that when you put something on the bottom, it, it projects the image on top. And I'll show you what it looks like inside the box. Uh, they still make these today. You can still get them. They run about uh, $20. And uh, you can see all it is, is uh, this is a little base that it comes with. It usually has something in there, like a little insect or something that you can tell it works. And two very, very reflective dishes. And you put one down here, you put another one on top, and anything that you put in there will give it the appearance that it's floating above this. Let me show you how cool. Okay, so here's that little insect that you saw there. Now, if you look at it, it looks like it's on top of this plastic dome, right? You look like you say, well, it's right there. You can, if I grab it, I could, I could grab it from here, right? You're thinking because the way it looks, but watch what happens when I try and grab it. It's just an illusion. It's like a, a almost like a hologram. What you're seeing is you're seeing it down there you see, there's nothing up, but when I put this on, it looks like it pops through the top. So, uh, very interesting. Look at that. You, now, you swear, and it looks so much, even in, in person, it looks better. But you swear right now that I could grab that, right, with my fingers, and you see what happens? And this is what you're actually looking at. I'll take the camera off and look, you see? How cool is that? Here's something we can relate to a little bit better. That is a, uh, a regular nut, maybe a quarter by 20. See that nut right there? Now you'd swear that it's on top, that I could grab it. If I if I pinch my fingers, I'll grab it, right? But look, <laughs> you're just looking at it in the bottom over there. And it just makes it seem like it pops up. I, I'm telling you, you, it's just fun. And you know, like I said, you got to get the angle correct to get the best effect. But like, like, like right there, that's, that's good, right? Look at that. You'd swear that that's, you know, grab it. I can't. Okay, here we have a uh, penny. Looks like I can touch it, right? If I could just touch it and... Whoa. <laughs> Again, the penny is down on the bottom there. This is a lot of fun, especially to get the kids thinking and experimenting and get them into the whole idea of science, you know, the real science. Now it comes with this little plastic bug, so it gives you something to start with and, you know... So, uh, if you're thinking to order one, I'll, I'll have a link in the description. I just think it's pretty interesting, especially if you have young kids. And I, I find it fascinating. I'm an old kid. Okay, next up, I was on my uh, poor man's flea market uh, yesterday where I walk around the trash night and see what's being thrown out. And, uh, you know, I collect a lot of times. I used to collect cords, appliance cords, things like that. And, and I, I have enough, so I don't collect them anymore unless I come across a really good vacuum cleaner cord or something a long one heavy duty yesterday i came across the holy grail of cords in the garbage and that is a uh, a vacuum cleaner commercial vacuum cleaner which comes with a 50 foot cord this one here and it was uh it was in beautiful shape and everything and so but you know i forgot my knife and i usually don't but it just so happens it fell out of my pocket and I put it in my truck and, and it was in there and I had nothing to cut the cord and I didn't want to leave it. And then I said, you know, maybe it's a sign from my dad. My dad was always a big vacuum cleaner collector. He used to uh, bring them home, fix them up, give them away. I said, you know, it's probably a sign from him. Let me show you a little bit about this. Now, normally I carry this, uh, this uh, little folding utility knife that uh, my mentor gave me, Dan. And it's very lightweight, it's strong. And this is what I use if I have to cut off any cords or anything, but I didn't have it with me. I, I gotta be careful, I can't carry a real knife. You know, I live in New York City and especially walking at night, you know how that is. But here it is, uh, an Electrolux commercial. You don't usually see these. I said, you know what, before I cut the cord, that beautiful cord, let me see if, if this thing, it, it looks like it's ready to run. Now, Let's the first see. thing you want to check whenever you get a vacuum or anything like that, and, and a commercial vacuum, you can always tell a, a, a real commercial vacuum, they're not attractive looking. They shouldn't have any fancy chrome or anything because they're really made to, uh, to be heavy duty. This is to uh, have access to the bag. And uh, you lift the bag up and you see, and now, unfortunately, this was in the rain yesterday, 
So we're going to take this bag out and just toss it. But, you know, the first thing you want to do is see how empty. And this is a, it's about a quarter full, but we're going to toss this bag. And then there's a filter in the bottom here, a motor filter in the very bottom that you take out. I'll show you what that now, this like. is Now, this is what they look like. I know it looks like it's torn up around the end. It's not. It's cut like that. This is the motor filter so that nothing gets past the bag into the motor. So uh, this one can be rinsed and cleaned out. It's a kind of a permanent filter. Next up, you'll see you have a two position switch. It's in the off position now. The first position is vacuum only. The second position is the uh, beater brush at the bottom. It has two motors. That's most commercial good vacuums will have two motors so it don't affect the suction. And uh, here's another thing you have to check. Now, when you flip the, uh, the vacuum over, this is called a beater bra or beater brush. And what this does when it spins, this agitates the carpet and allows you, this is for carpet only. You would use the vacuum for bare floors and you would use this for carpet. Now you can see the string on here. This was a telltale. A lot of times this would jam up the, the, uh, the beta bar and then it would smoke and people would throw it out because they think it's going to cause a fire. So this happens all the time, either hair or string or something. So you first, you have to pop this off and clean that okay, out. Okay, when you remove the cover, uh, there's six screws that hold it on. Now, one thing, this is a reset switch. If it should jam up, this will pop. And um, one thing you always have to remember, commercial vacuums are made to be serviced, unlike regular vacuums. They're very simple. They're, everything is accessible to get to. This is the motor that drives the belt for here. Now, uh, before you do anything, we're going to vacuum. My father always used to say, you need a vacuum to fix a vacuum because all this dust gets in here. So we'll vacuum it out with the shop vac. We'll take this uh, roller out of here. And, uh, and clean to remove the uh, beta bar, there are two brackets with two screws on each end. You pull the right end up first like this, and then you pull it out from the little pocket. You see, these just fit in there. They're, uh, they're like bearing uh, holders. And there's uh, another one on this side. So you can pull that straight out. And this gives you access to clean this or, or replace it. If these brushes get worn, this, these brushes aren't worn. They're just filled with string. Okay, using a small brush and a vacuum, we got all that uh, dust out of there. Also, we cleaned the beta bar. And uh, you remember these bearing cups over here. You want to make sure you take a toothpick and you go around here to make sure there's no dirt on the inside. Vacuum it out. That's where sometimes hair and dirt accumulates. This should spin freely. This will get put back with the belt over it. Sometimes if this don't spin, this is your problem here. They sell replacement belts. That a lot of times this will break. But uh, so far, this is good. We'll put this back. And then I vacuumed in here. So if there's any obstruction in there, it'll come through. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Nice feature. You see these three lights before? There's three little LED uh, bulbs in here. And uh, they correspond to here. Now, this is an indicator. So if, uh, if, one, if this light goes on, it means your bag is full, that red light here. If this green light goes on here, this means that, um, that there's an obstruction uh, in here, in the vacuum in here. And if this one goes on, I believe it's that the brush is stuck. So this is your indicator and that will pop that circuit breaker. Okay, I put it all back together. I plugged it in and absolutely nothing. It didn't even, you know, I just two switches, both were done. So that's a good thing, believe it or not. It means there's a cut in the power somewhere. So I went through it and you know what? I looked under here, if you lift this up, in this little hole here down, there was a, this. This is a pressure uh, pressure switch. See that? That must be a safety so that the vacuum won't turn on when the door is open because that is supposed to come through there. However, whatever held it on to the side must have been broken. This thing was down low. So all I did is I bypassed it. I uh, cut the wires and I twisted, I soldered it and uh, taped it up. And now... Because I'm always going to be able to, you know, know when it's closed or whatever. And I'm not going to play with trying to get that to uh, hold up. I'm sure that probably is an issue with these. Let's try it okay, out. Okay, another indication when you have a commercial vacuum is you'll see it's a three-prong pl plug instead of a, a two-prong plug. Let's try it out. Now it's plugged in. First one's vacuum. Second one, brush. Outstanding. Okay, now I washed out the filter with soap and water. Uh, this will dry quickly. 
because it's just a foam filter. That's a secondary filter. It really doesn't do much in case something gets past the bag or whatever. And we'll order some Style U bags and we'll be back in service. Okay, so in closing, that was a fun little mosh today. I have to tell you something, uh, a lot of satisfaction there. I know you ever get the feeling sometimes that you, your mom or your dad is up there looking down, kind of smiling when you do something that they used to do. It's, it's, a, it's a strange thing. And if you still have your parents, God bless you, you're lucky. But if you've lost them like me, you know, you miss them and you think about that. You think about strange things. They pop in your head every once in a while. But this is a tribute. My dad would have been so happy, you know, especially a commercial vacuum. I know I could just hear what he would have been saying. You know how much that thing costs new? <laughs> you know how much that thing costs new? That's where he, that was his favorite part to see how much if he would have bought it new. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye.